Hey everybody. A little while ago I was watching a video about how not to make some really cheap homemade suet for the bird feeder over winter when up popped my old friend nitrate. And considering the fact that I had been thinking about nitrate earlier today, because of course I was, I always think about nitrate, I decided today would be the day that we would shoot a video talking about all things nitrate, or at least all things that I can think about uh, concerning nitrate. So starting with, what is nitrate? Everybody talks about it, or at least I know I do a lot in the aquarium hobby, but what is it? Well, it is a simple chemical compound comprised of one nitrogen atom and three oxygen atoms. And it's inert. And being inert, it really doesn't interact with other chemicals. And kind of knowing that, you can kind of just leave it there as far as wondering whether or not nitrate is harmful or dangerous or not. So tonight I want to talk about nitrate in our diet and how nitrate affects us before we get to what's going on in our fish tank. Because I don't think the same thing is going on in our fish that's going on with us. Normally, uh, our physiology and fish physio fish fish <laughs> physiology, that is very hard to say. Um, those two things are very similar normally, and you can compare how food digests in us to the way it digests in fish and so on and so forth. And nitrate is the same under most circumstances, but with us, there's a few little different things within our diet that have more to do with our technology than it does our physiology. And I think that's where a lot of concern about nitrate comes from. You'll hear a lot of stuff in our world about nitrate and nitrate consumption. You hear a lot of concern about uh, processed food and preservatives containing nitrate, um, hot dogs, bacon, uh, preserved meats are notorious for having a lot of nitrates. And there's just so much misinformation out there about what's going on with all this process and where you get your nitrates and what's actually bad for you and what's happening. So let's Let's talk about that first because there really is some genuine uh, discussion within the medical and dietary community over the effects of long-term high exposure to nitrate, not just nitrate in general. There's not any real kind of argument over that, but there's a discussion in the medical community about the effects of high exposure to nitrate over long periods of time. And when I say there's a discussion in the medical community, I mean a genuine discussion. I don't mean some fringe group out there believes that, you know, uh, ibuprofen causes mind control or something like that. Just because somebody believes something doesn't mean it's a discussion within the medical community. This is a genuine discussion of what are the effects of high levels of nitrate over long periods of time in our diet. And to put things in perspective, what we think of as a high level of nitrate is nothing compared to what we think about when we're talking about our aquarium. Or maybe I should have said that the other way around because our consumption of nitrate makes what's going on in our fish tanks look silly. Um, Bacon and, you know, the preserved meats is where we really think of the nitrate being in your diet. And I actually read an article, a BBC article today, that um, at least the dairies that they checked in the UK or wherever they were, um, the, the processed bacon actually had less nitrate in it than the all-natural unpreserved bacon. But the numbers were ridiculously low. The, the high level nitrate was like 16.8 parts per million. And the low, you know, the bacon with the preservatives in it actually had the lower level of like 14 and a half parts per million or something like that. If you eat spring kale or spring broccoli that's fresh and growing, you're consuming between two and 4,000 parts per million nitrate in your broccoli or your kale or your leafy green spinach salad or whatever. Most of our diet, and I can't speak for America, but according to this BBC article that in the UK, 80% of people's diet, 80% of the nitrates in people's diet comes from vegetable consumption, not other sources. Meat and preservatives only account for less than 5% of the actual overall nitrate consumption. It's the vegetables is where it's at. 
And that's exactly, it makes sense when you think about it. What do we put plants in our fish tanks for? We put them in there to soak up the nitrate. We put nitrate fertilizer on our fields to grow plants. It's the, the nitrates are going into the plants and then we're eating it. And it's not some kind of different compound. The nitrate that's in a plant isn't different than the nitrate. It's one nitrogen and it's three oxygens. That's what nitrate is. And it's no difference between how you're consuming it, whether you're eating it in your diet or you're getting it in your water. Nitrate is nitrate is nitrate. And you getting it in your vegetables doesn't somehow make it good nitrate. And when you get it in your bacon, it somehow is bad nitrate. With the exception, speaking of bacon, the only time nitrate actually becomes bad for you is when it gets converted into a compound called a nitrosamine. And there's two different ways that can happen. One is when the nitrate is heated to temperatures about as high as you would get when you were, say, frying bacon. And those nitrates will then get converted into nitrosamine. And that is a carcinogenic chemical. And that's where a lot of this whole nitrates cause cancer and you shouldn't have nitrate in your diet. It's because of that aspect of it primarily. But also when you're eating vegetable material and you get nitrate in your mouth, the bacteria in your mouth immediately start breaking that nitrate down, but they're doing it the reverse direction of what's going on in our fish tank, and they're actually converting it into nitrite. And when we swallow that nitrite and it mixes with the stomach acids, that then converts into the nitrosamines. And so while the nitrite itself is not particularly bad for you, that is what gets converted into the nitrosamines, which are carcinogenic. So the last time I checked, I was not preparing my fish's water at 450 degrees. So I won't be converting any of the nitrate in the fish tank into the nitrosamines. As far as what's going on with their saliva and you know their, their bacteria in their mouth and swallowing and stomach acids, I don't know, but I'm not worried about it. If that's tiny, tiny little bit of, you know, whatever, again, I'm not worried about that. In us, however, that is the two sources of where nitrate actually can become something that's harmful, where it gets converted into nitrosamine. As long as it's just nitrate, it's not bad for you. It's just nitrate. In fact, our body uses nitrate for all kinds of stuff. We need it. And there's a lot of studies out there that show high levels of nitrate are actually good for you. And we need nitrate, men in particular need nitrate to make nitric oxide. And I'll just say that there's little blue pills out there that are basically nitric oxide pills that provide it when our bodies aren't producing it enough. So if you want to boost your own nitric oxide production, eat lots of leafy green vegetables, get lots of nitrate in your diet. Um, they use nitrate for uh, the heart attack. If you need to, you know, if you're having chest pains, or whatever, those pills you put under, that's, you're getting nitrates from that. I know it's nitroglycerin, but you're, you're getting the nitrate and that's what's doing its work in your blood and it's allowing more oxygen in and so on and so forth. So nitrate is not some bad thing in our diet at all. And the only real question is what are long-term effects of very high levels? And again, I'm talking tens of thousands of parts per million over long periods of time. Is that something that can be bad for us? And we don't know. There's still as much science out there that says no. There's as much science out there that says it's good for you. And there's some science out there that says there might be some problems with that. But at this point, it's still sort of an open question about high levels over long periods of time. So bringing all that back to the fish tank and from my own experience and everything I've learned and all the research I've done about fish and fish biology and physiology and all that stuff, I am convinced that the only real way the nitrates are having a serious impact on our fish is because of osmoregulation. I don't think it's a coincidence that all of the fish out there that are said to be super sensitive to nitrates are also the fish that are very soft water fish. They're super sensitive to any kind of high levels of dissolved solids in their water. So traditionally, when you would think about something like a discus, that's a wild caught discus or whatever, they've never been exposed to nitrate or whatever, being exposed to something that's inert isn't going to harm you. What they've never really been exposed to is high levels of dissolved solids in the water that affects their osmoregulation. So suddenly you put them in what is effectively, using a technical term, it will be saltier water. The nitrates are 
permanent hardness. They do add to the salinity of the tank or the specific gravity of the tank. So when you're putting a very soft water fish into, into water that's got a lot of nitrate in it, even though that nitrate in itself is inert, it is dissolved solids in the water that are going to affect the way that fish moves water in and out of its cells. So that is what I'm convinced is the most impactual aspect of having nitrate in our aquariums. It's the way the fish osmoregulate and the level of dissolved solids. This is why fish can get acclimated to very, very high levels. These, you know, unkept fish tanks that are, you know, hundreds of parts per million, you know, crimson red vial when you do a nitrate test, but the fish are doing fine. They're doing fine because they've adapted to this but saltier water. It's got a higher concentration of dissolved solids in it. The nitrate isn't giving them cancer or killing them in some way. It's just adding dissolved solids to their water. So if you do a massive water change and you drop the dissolved solids really quickly, that's going to take its toll no matter what those dissolved solids are. Just because we, you know, we check the nitrate level and we see that number come way down, well, you're also bringing the calcium down or, the, you know, whatever. Anytime you're dropping dissolved solids like that, that rapidly, it's going to have an enormous impact on the fish. And nitrate is just the only thing we test for. So it's not so much that the shock of not having nitrate in the water anymore, that never even made sense to me at all. Uh, I'll, I'll do a whole separate video about nitrate shock because I just think that's nonsense. But it's the, it's the sudden drop in dissolved solids, no matter what that drop was, whatever those dissolved solids, if you're going from 3,000 parts per million down to 500 parts per million, the fish are going to go through some sort of osmotic shock as they readjust. If it slowly got up to 3,000 parts per million, well, that's fine. So that's why I always say in an old tank syndrome situation, or if you've just got a tank that you really want to kind of catch up on, don't really go in there and gung-ho do huge water changes because you're going to reduce that dissolved solid level so rapidly that's where you're going to have your big impact on your fish's health it's not the sudden lack of nitrate in the water i mean supposedly nitrate's bad for the fish I, you'd think removing it would be good you know so the idea that they go through a shock because some bad thing has been taken away from them it just it doesn't make any kind of sense whatsoever it's just i don't know i think it's people just thinking out loud and then these ideas take hold somebody says yeah that makes sense and people just run with it but it doesn't make sense when you really start breaking it down and again when you really look at what nitrate is and what nitrate does and how it affects our physiology if you compare that phys physiology to fish physiology then you'll see that there's nothing in it's it's an inert chemical if it's not giving us cancer it's not giving the fish cancer the only time nitrates are really bad for us is when we cook them at really high temperatures and again the whole mouth bacteria thing that i talked about and when people are little baby infants in in the first six months or so of your life your body is not capable of processing the nitrate properly and it actually does get converted into high levels of nitrite that then block oxygen in your blood and you wind up developing what's known as blue baby syndrome due to lack of oxygen in the blood and that can be really bad depending on how much you know nitrate the baby is exposed to and so for basically that reason and that reason alone uh, our drinking water and well water and stuff like that is regulated as to how much nitrate we can have in it. And that's one of the reasons you're not supposed to give infants water as something to drink. You're just supposed to really reduce the amount of nitrate that's in their food. If you look at baby food that's spinach, that doesn't have nitrate in it. That's why it's baby food. It's not just regular spinach that's been put in a blender. That would have way, way, way too much nitrate for an infant. It's baby food. It's had the nitrate removed from it because they're infants. After six months, your body is able to deal with nitrate. And then again, you know, into the thousands and thousands of parts per million in our leafy green salads. And that's not bad for us at all. So I don't see how it's magically bad for fish when it's not bad for us, unless you talk about the environment the fish are in. It's affecting the environment and their osmoregulation, but the chemical itself causing cancer, giving them liver dysfunction, doing whatever it magically is supposed to do, because nobody can ever tell me what nitrate actually does to fish. I know what ammonia does to fish. I know how ammonia can kill fish. I know how nitrite can kill fish. I can't find anything anywhere that tells me what nitrate even does to fish, let alone how it kills them because it doesn't do anything to fish. It's inert. It doesn't do anything to anything. It's just inert nitrate. It's not 
what everybody seems to be making it out to. Anyway, that's all I can think of. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of comments under this one. Um, let me know if you want to hear about my thoughts on nitrate shock. Um, you kind of already heard them, so if you want me to go into a more thorough video about that, I will. Otherwise, we'll just call that one good because, again, I just think it's nonsense. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments section. We'll get a good conversation started on this one, hopefully. But think about what I said. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you real soon in the next one. Thanks for watching.